YouTube, welcome back. Lenny Sly, RoadWarriorTC.com. Welcome to episode number five of Aikido, the way that doesn't work. Um, today we're going to explore um, Katate Dori, Kaitanage, the traditional way. And we're going to show you how this technique doesn't work and why it doesn't work. Um, <clears throat> before we get started with that, on the first, the series premiere of Aikido, the way of the Road Warrior, I did state in that video that we were not going to be doing videos on techniques that don't work with Aikido the way that doesn't work and then we we're going to show you the exact opposite of the technique that doesn't work by showing you the technique that does work for the technique that didn't work from that from this platform on the way of the Road Warrior. I said that we were not going to do that. Um, after consulting with Bob and a couple of my, my other senior students, <clears throat> we decided we changed our mind with that. We we're going to show you not all of the techniques that we do that don't work and show you the, the way that can work or show you how we can make it work or give you guys ideas on how to make it work for a more street applicable technique. We're not going to do that for all of them, but we're going to do it for selective techniques. Like for instance, this technique, Katatidori Kaitanage, we are going to do a video on Katatidori Kaitanage on the way of the Rogue Warrior series. So you're going to see an application of this and how we make it work and how it could work for you and how you can take the principles that we use and apply them towards your Aikido training to make your Aikido training more efficient and more street applicable, practical, whatever you want to do. Um, so I just wanted to get that, get that out of the way really quick so you guys do know that because I know that I got some comments where people were like, can you show me this, show me that, you know, techniques that we've already done, where's the applicable version of this or that. I know you guys want to see that and um, we decide that we're, we're going to accommodate some of those, not all of them, but some of them. Um, so bear with us. We'll get, we'll eventually get to some of the other ones that we haven't shown practical applications. We'll probably do a couple of those so you can see variations of those and how they would work and how we make them work. Now remember the stuff that we do for, for it to work for us, this is our way of doing things. Okay. It's, um, it's just, it's the way how we apply things. It's the way how we make things um, work for us and make things effective for us. So it's it, it necessarily, it might not necessarily be your way of doing it, it's just the way how we do it. So it's our flavor on the way how we apply technique and how we make things effective for the way how we express our Aikido with my version of tension Aikido, okay? So, whatever have you, if you like it, you like it, if you don't, you don't, you know, it's whatever suits you, man, whatever floats your boat. You know, we're here to provide for you guys and to, and to give you guys instruction. You know, when you look at any other Aikido YouTube channel that's out there, there's nobody, okay, nobody in the YouTube community that does Aikido videos the way that I do. No one does them organically. No one does them unscripted the way how I do it. No one does them with, without editing, okay? Everything that we do is raw footage right from the take of action to cut. Okay, this is what we do. Okay, look at anyone else's other platform. No one's doing this. On top of that, you don't really see any Shihan doing any videos like this. You don't see any Shihan really commenting on anything that I'm doing, saying, well, no, the traditional way would work. No one's coming forth with that, saying that. On top of it, they're also not saying that, yeah, Lenny's right, that wouldn't work. Got to kind of scratch your head about that and think about that. Why is it no one is uh, no one in the higher upper levels of the Aikido fraternity are addressing any of this and calling me out saying no, the traditional way would work. There's a lot of Aikidoka that that comment, but there's also a lot of Aikidoka that like what we do, and and that's fine, you know. But when you look at the big picture of things, you don't really see any of the. Yamada senseis, the Satomi senseis, you know, the, those type of caliber guys, you know, Christian Tissier or anyone else sit there and try to say, no, that's wrong. This is the way how it works. It does work like that because, you know, yeah, we break it down and we show you the resistance and whatnot and show you how it doesn't work. And yeah, I tell my ukes to give me resistance. Okay, that's the whole point of this. So you can see how it doesn't work with resistance. And then we show you, <clears throat> why it won't work and how the uke can stop your movement 
And then you get people that go, well, that's really not the IQ way. They're not flowing through. This is where people need to wake up, you know, because the practical application, the way you train in the dojo is the way you're going to defend yourself on the street. That's bottom line, okay? Whether you want to use this in the real world or not, God forbid you ever have to use this in the real world, and you can't because you're not prepared for it. Prepare yourself for that possibility because it's possible that you might be called upon one day to use those skills, and when you can't use them, you're going to look back at your study of training and you're going to be thoroughly disappointed on what you've been doing all these years. And um, the only person you're going to be able to blame is yourself. Because I'm going to tell you something. When it comes down to the heat of the moment, your sensei, your senpai, other people that you train with are never going to come to your aid when the shit hits the fan. You and you alone are the only one that's responsible for your safety or the safety of your family when you're out and about. There ain't gonna be no Batman symbol that goes up in the sky and here comes Sensei, whatever his name is, flying down the street to come fight your battles for you, okay? You're gonna have to do it on your own. It's all about the individual and the individual's practice. So if you wanna be able to defend yourself, you're going to have to take accountability for your training. You're the one that's going to have to step it up. You're the one that's going to have to make it work. And I can help with those things. Because that's the only way how I know. I only look at it that way. Yeah, we train and stuff in the dojo that is a little bit less practical than normal. And we do it for several reasons. But the majority of the stuff that we do is in your face, practical application. So that being said, here we go. I, I, I so from the traditional version of Katate Dori Kaitanagi, I'm sure that some of you have seen this technique before. We move through. Here's the Amolte version. Okay. Here is the Ura version. Okay, we'll show that to you again. Amolte. Now, we did that very slow, very precise. As you can see, Bob followed perfectly along. Now, <clears throat> when you have something like Bob Camco, okay, now it's hard to see some of this stuff in video, but when you got this guy that can robocop your wrist and stop you, this man's grip is incredible. And he comes in to grab your Tenkan right away and he crushes this. What happens first? Your Tenkan starts to fall apart because he's crushing your hand into your center. So you're trying to do this, it's not gonna work. So obviously you have to move with this before he grabs you. But he still gives you that grip and you move. He still crushes this. So now what happens when I try to go underneath try to get this to here, even if I try to take a center, right, traditionally, traditionally, I put my hand up, he puts his hand up. We guide this through, as I turn my hip, I stretch him out, as I go ass first under the arm, not head, not doing this, because he slaps me in a, in a chokehold right away. So, you're going underneath with this. What happens when I go to do this, and I bring this up, and he suppresses my hand, and then I can't do this. So he stops me, so right from here, how do I get this? Now my arm's behind my back and oh shit, chokehold. He gets a chokehold, what if he grabs on to my hand? Grab onto my wrist, grabs onto my wrist, I can try to hit him, but what if he steps in front of me and now he hip tosses me? What if he sweeps out my leg because he has my hand, I'm trying to stop my face from being smashed on the ground? That's going to be hard to sit there and, and work against that. So again, he crushes me to the point where I try to do this. See, look where his arm's at too. His right arm, he can underhook my arm and lock this up. Now he can leg sweep me as he's pulling this down. Boom, pull, leg sweep. And I'm going right into the ground, shoulder first. Now I have a separated shoulder. 
If I land on the shoulder, if I land on my shoulder hitting the ground, especially concrete, and he's holding me to the last second, I'm in trouble. Okay? Let's do that again. So you come through, suppresses everything, he locks this, there it is, leg sweep, bam! Down I go. He still has his wrist. Who's to say? He doesn't strike, he doesn't pin me out, slingshot me around with the pin. Slingshots me around with the pin, pull, pull, pull. Put the leg come over. Now he pins out. Right? Kai Shiwaza, he did a reversal on me. Very applicable from the traditional sense of this. Now, same thing, he comes through. What if I punch him? Bam! He turns whichever way, I go underneath, or I try to go underneath, he just lets go and backs off. What if I punch, boom, and he backs off right away? Oh, wait a minute, I gotta get tight to knock it. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. Okay, I come through here, I take this, I go underneath. Right from here, who's to say he doesn't go straight from my leg? Oh shit, he pulls me over, now he's on top. Now we got some jujitsu going on here. Now what? See how he did that? Probably not, let's show it to you again. Just in case you missed it. And we're going slow. So we come through, right? Right from there, oh shit. There's the reversal on that. He doesn't have to move. You take him down to the ground. Let's go right back to that position. Right. right. We come through. This idea of this, right? As we go through, we're thinking this is doing this big movement to grab. Look where it puts him. It puts him right in that position. Right away. If he wanted to, he can move against the grain of my knee and push me this way. I'm naturally gonna let go of that. And he's just gonna ride up, right in the position, and I'm in trouble. Can this work against any Shihan out there? Absolutely it can. This is how easy you can destroy this technique. So this technique, this application of traditional katate re kaitenage, doesn't work. It won't work. Whether you have that uke, that's like Bob, okay? One second he's there, the next second, you're on your way down to the ground. This guy can play the game just like anyone else, just as good as anyone else taking ukemi. But the one thing that he does that the majority of you will never do is he thinks outside of the box when it comes to taking ukemi. I can't even tell you how many times this guy has tried to get the upper hand on me just fucking around on the mat, okay? Fortunately though, I know his mindset so I can counter his counter, okay? Usually it works pretty well within a temi and you encounter it. But again, when you're doing technique with somebody, especially with this, this technique, this traditional version of Katata or Kaitanage doesn't work. You know, you look, the, you look at the likes of Christian Tissier. His ballerina style Aikido that he does with his ukes, do you really think those people are being thrown at that capacity to take those type of bouncing break falls off a of Kaitanage? If you do, that's some really good shit you're smoking. Send me some, I live in Illinois, okay? I like to try that stuff. Because that's very delusional if you think that Christian Tissi can throw anybody like that in the real world. There's no way he can. There's no way that you can do that. And I'm gonna tell you why. I'm 200 pounds, okay? I am three times as strong as Christian Tissier. If I can't throw him like that, or I can't throw Rod like that, even with muscular power, there's no way in hell you're gonna throw somebody like that with Aikido power. No way. Not that type of ukemi off of Kaitanage. No way. No way. That's just an uke taking good ukemi. That's all that it is. It's just an acrobat wearing a skirt. That's it. Hey, again. So you move through Kaitanage right through here. Even the Amolte side of this, he's in that position. If it's an Amolte side and I grab him 
and I'm trying to move in this way for a throw, all he needs to do is drop, and he counters it right away. Now, we're showing you the application of, of taking me and launching me from that and how he can counter this. What happens when he just suppresses it? Okay? He's a Toshi, crushing the knee. So we go to do that again. He comes through with this. He goes right there. He crushes the knee. Stops the technique right away. Because when you think about this, let's go back. I come through. He's holding my hand. So even if I stretch him out and I go underneath at this point, I have to step back. He is holding on to my hand. But as I go to transition to grab his, he goes right for that knee and hyperextends that knee and down I go. How does that work? It works like this. Because I'm doing this and I'm moving back to grab this, my shift of weight does this, which allows him to compromise my knee. Because I can't do this being forward because then he just rolls and he throws. But because I go backwards, okay, I go backwards, however this works. Um, I go, I can't even remember how it works. Because I go backwards, my knee isn't forward, he's able to suppress that and push that forward. Now, if I'm leaning forward upper body and he pushes my knee lower body, guess what? The knee's gonna get dislocated. You're done. It doesn't work. Doesn't work. Another viewpoint from here, what if I'm just going to do this, how you normally would try to capture that, taking center? What if he just slips right there? Bam, elbow strikes right in the face. Other hand, other hand, bam, elbow strikes. Even if I get to this point here, he can slip and nail me right in the side of the head with his elbow, come right up and nail that. He can even get his arm around my head, uh-oh, cinches, steps in front of me, hello, I'm going for a ride at that point. Now he throws me over the Koshi, it's hard to do that from static. But the idea of that is right through here, wham, right for the head, go for the head, and now you have the throw. Doesn't work. There's so many things that you can, that can stop you. Right from the beginning, he crushes, he stops you. How do you get that to work? Even from here, the 10 kind gets messed up immediately, you have problems. Now, obviously I'm gonna wanna sit there and try to adjust to whatever mistake I, I made or whatever I'm trying to counter from him doing, but the second I try to do that, he has the arm hook right now. Hey, can I, he, he cuts that right away. Now I'm in trouble. But, for the sake of this, he goes to throw, right? I can hook him and throw him and have him in a lock. But when you're the one that's going over, are you gonna think to do that right away? No, because usually you're practicing the technique as is. You're not thinking of the what if and yeah buts and how you can counter his counter. So let's show that one last time. So I come through, he cuts, he gets that, he goes to throw as I go down, I watch him. We're not like a lock up on the elbow. And I have control of that. Now granted, he's not gonna sit there like a dead dog. He's not gonna be like, rub my belly, rub my belly. No, he's gonna get up. And he's gonna attack you again. It doesn't work. Now granted, we're not, we're not beating the hell out of this technique like we've done before with some of the other ones. This is pretty, pretty cut and dry. Pretty cut and dry. So, is there anything you wanna to add to this? A lot of times I think that mistake is that transition, and even if you get them to post out, there's a lot of risk. There's a lot of openings, and we just expose those. At least traditionally speaking. Yeah, traditionally speaking. So, good? Hey, I got this much. So there you have it. Aikido, the way that doesn't work, episode five. Katate Dori Kaitanage. If you like the video, hit a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Um, I just want to make a, a quick statement. I'm always making quick statements. For those of you that, out, that are out there that are, that are posting great comments, 
and just posting comments in general. If you want me to reply to a comment, okay, don't be an asshole about it and sit there and say, oh, well, you've, you've replied to all my other comments within a certain period of time. Dude, okay, this isn't my career. I have a career job, I have a family, I have several Facebook pages, okay, social media pages that I manage, that I'm admins on. Obviously, this YouTube channel, I have a massive online class platform that you can, you can purchase Tension Aikido all day long and watch over 300 videos online exclusively for members, okay? I have a lot of shit going on. If I don't get back to you right away, don't take it personally, okay? I don't get off of my nine to five job and sit on my ass and make comments on YouTube videos going, why isn't this guy contacting me back? Why isn't he messaging me? You know, come on, you're not paying me a fucking salary. Okay, until the day you're paying me, when I get to you is when I get to you. Okay, sorry to be rude, but some of you guys need to understand, I have a life outside of this. I take up a lot of my personal time to provide this for you. Be grateful. Don't give me a hard time about me not responding, because I can't respond to everybody all the time, otherwise I would. And eventually I'll get to you. So, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you next time on Aikido, the way that doesn't work. Thanks for watching.